Hello everybody, it's Dragana from Sasebo. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited. Today we're cooking, we're making a gel plate. I recently bought one and by mistake, me not being good with inches, I bought 8 by 10 inches and have a look. I use A4 size paper. I'm missing that part. It's a bit small for my paper. I can still use it. It's perfect in any other way, but I want to make a bigger one. And... If I order a big one now, I'd have to wait another few months to get it. And I don't want to wait. I just want to make it now. And I thought since I'm making one, I'll turn the camera on so you can see how I do it. I looked up some videos on YouTube and I found two channels that I watched. I will link them down below. Those were the two channels that I watched before I learned how to make my own. Since then, I've changed that recipe to suit what I wanted to do. And uh, I adjusted the ingredients, the, the amount of ingredients to get the plate that I like, the thickness and uh, the kind of firmness and the size. If you find that what I'm going to do here today is a bit too big for you, you can have the recipe. I will leave the recipe in the description box. And also I will do a screen with just recipe so you can take a photo. Let's go through the materials and tools first. So you will need a tray, which is either glass or metal. And we are going to pour our liquid jelly plate into this and let it set. So I'm using here this tray. This cost about $6, it wasn't that expensive. I'm not going to use it for food. I decided this is going to be my tray for the gel plate and I will probably store it later on in it as well. This is the size 360 by 260 millimeters, which is actually uh, 10 by 14 inches. So if you have a tray that is 12 by 12 inches or 10 by 14 inches or 11 by 13 inches, that will work as well. Uh, for this recipe. It's best if it's a new tray that has no scratches on the bottom. If you use an old tray that has scratches on the bottom, your prints will end up showing uh, with those scratches. This is what I mean. I used this tray before and since then I've used it in my eco prints. I wasn't careful and I got quite a lot of, you probably can't see, but I can feel them underneath my hand that it's scratched. And if I make a gel plate, in this tray all my prints will end up with those scratches which is fine if you want to do a really like grungy prints all the time but you might not want to so i don't know use a new tray and have it just for that you will also need some sort of pot that you're going to melt your gelatin in and you will need a pot that is bigger and deeper than this one so that you can put it over it to have like a double bath i've seen people do it with microwave you can certainly try like that. I don't own a microwave since the old one broke down. I never bought a new one and I just stopped using it all together. So I just use double boiler method for that. That's when it comes to tools and you'll need something to do the mixing. Uh, I've also seen some people use whiskers. I don't do that. It ends up with a lot of bubbles. Just gentle stirring is fine. Okay, so... That's the tools. I'll put that aside. We'll need that at the very end. The recipe is right here. Okay. So I have one liter of water. There it is, which is four cups. I have one kilo of glycerin. And I don't know how many cups. I will use this to measure and I'll let you know because this is, goes different than water. It might be four cups or it might be a little bit less because it's heavier and more the viscous kind of thing. Uh, and then you'll need 200 grams of gelatin. Now it all depends of the gelatin in your country when you buy it, how it's packed. Sometimes these packs come with five grams or seven grams or I don't know. And I found these that are actually 10 grams of gelatin and that's perfect for me because if I need 200 grams I'll just get 20 of these packets. This is um, beef gelatin it's just the standard one and not the well you know how sometimes they have the, those instant ones that don't need heating up I don't know if that one's good enough for this I haven't tried it I just use the ordinary beef gelatin in packets of 10 grams and I have 20 here. 
Now, one ingredient that I haven't used before and I want to try this time is the preservative. This is the code for it, E211, and it's used to preserve pickled foods. So this is probably more than enough for this amount, but I'm going to use the full packet. I'm not going to eat my jelly plate, so I don't really care if it's too much. I just don't want it to go moldy because last time the jelly plate that I made for myself lasted only about two months before it turned really moldy and I had to throw it away. Uh, now this time I want to try adding this and see if that makes it last longer. Uh, the other thing that I've changed from that recipe that I've tried before is this here. Uh, this time I am using only glycerin. I'm not using any alcohol. And also I've noticed that my gel plate, when I made it the first time around with half the amount of glycerin and half uh, alcohol it sort of started evaporating it was becoming smaller and smaller as the time passed by so i ended up with a really small plate by the end of two months uh, smaller than my a4 it actually shrank by at least two centimeters all around and it became thinner i don't know if that's the water evaporating from it or the alcohol i'm not sure i know this is not going to last forever but i just want to see by adding this and using just glycerin, I want to see if that's going to help make it have a longer life. I'll start by just adding water into this container. I'll just add all of the water. It's one liter or four cups. Now here in this instruction says to leave this gelatin 10 minutes in the water and then start heating it up slowly. So what I'm going to do, I'll just open up all of these and I'm going to add the gelatin in the water. That's quite a lot of gelatin here. Okay. So the instructions say I should leave this for about 10 minutes. I'll clean up this mess and set up the rest of the table while this is sitting in the water like that. While I'm waiting for my uh, gelatin to soften up, a little bit this is what it looks like it's been five minutes and this is what it looks like it's quite thick i'm surprised last time it wasn't like this so i guess the results also vary on the gelatin itself perhaps there is some variable there that i'm not aware of um, you know maybe this one's fresher or something i don't know i have no idea but i'm gonna wait a little bit longer and in the meantime I have put uh, water in this uh, pan and you see this, this one is smaller and also not as deep as that one. That way um, I can heat up the water and the water is going to heat up this because gelatin is not meant to boil. It shouldn't boil. If it boils, it's destroyed. Okay, and I put water about halfway and i switched it on because i want the water to be hot uh, and ready for the next step now i'm going to put this one at the very end and i need to melt the gelatin in the water first until it becomes clear and then i will add glycerin to it and mix again slowly i need to wait another five minutes I want to show you something. Look at that ashtray. It's kind of really flat down the bottom and it's got this uh, octagonal shape. And I found this one. So I, I hope I'll um, have enough of the 
gelatin mixture to spare just a little bit for these two containers because I really want to try and get those two different shapes of jelly plate because I, this is quite a large amount that I'm making so maybe it's going to be all right it's not gonna take away too much from the, that big plate if I pour a little bit in those two containers also while we're waiting for the gelatin to soften up a little bit I just want to um, give you a comparison of the cost involved so for me to make this big jelly plate by myself together with the tray that I bought um, cost me about $26 but to order one online that size it would cost me about 60 55 to 60 dollars depending on the if there's a sale or not plus the postage to Bosnia which is quite a lot and I would have to wait a long time so um, this is really cost effective but like I said it's not permanent every now and then you have to redo it which I hope by adding this its life is going to extend or at least double all right it's been 10 minutes so the water is really hot but it's not boiling and i'm going to put this here and i'll just slowly you see it became really thick when i did this the first time um I did not put enough gelatin or maybe the gelatin I had was not good enough or something maybe it was not fresh I don't know and uh, my jelly plate wasn't firm enough and once it pulled down when I went to take it out from the tray it broke it broke into several pieces so I had to chop it up melt it again add more gelatin and uh, do the whole process from the start so since then i've been using more gelatin and it might look like it's a lot but i'd rather have more and have a firmer plate if you know what i mean like the one that's not going to break when i take it in and out the last one um, that i've shown you on camera that i used quite a lot in some of the videos was the right thickness but like I said, it lasted only about two months before turning moldy. And I kept it in my studio. I should have kept it perhaps in the fridge, in a container covered. And um, that's another thing that I think that it's important when you store this. Keep it in a cool place when you're not using it you can see it's starting to to melt on the sides so i'm just mixing it gently just doing that and i can hear the water starting to kind of boil might have to reduce the heat just let it sit like that and I'll prepare some paper strips for the paper strips I'm just using ordinary copy paper it can be scrap paper and I'm just going to um, you know just cut it half lengthwise like that and then again you can use newspapers as well, you can use um, tissue paper, I suppose. And we'll just cut this. So I have about eight strips of paper like that. That should be enough. Let's just 
mix this. Oh, it's becoming more liquid now. It's starting to melt. Which is a good sign. But, you know, this is a process that should not be rushed. You don't want this mixture to boil. And uh, if you mix it too vigorously, you'll end up with a lot of bubbles. And we don't want that. I'm really excited. Of course, once I put this in a tray, I have to leave it 24 hours. So I have to leave it overnight and come back tomorrow to reveal it. And I thought we might as well then try it out. Do a couple of jelly prints. I haven't done any for a while now. Like I said, that one I had to throw away and I was waiting for a new one to arrive. And I should have just made myself a new one. Now we do have a bit of foam forming, but that's to be expected. Nothing to worry about. It's just the sign that it's melting. It's not so grainy anymore. It's kind of liquid. It needs to be clear. Another thing I should mention is um, if for whatever reason um, it's not successful or it's too soft or it kind of ends up with scratches or you know you're not happy with it do not throw away the whole uh, thing just chop it up in pieces with your knife or with scissors put it in a container like that and melt it again and once you get it into liquid state you know you can pour it again into that tray that you're using it happened to me before i left mine close to the heater and when i went to use it one side of the jelly plate was totally dissolved like out of shape it just sort of <laughs> it was just really bad so what i had to do is um, melt it and try and set it again and it was totally fine I do have a lot of foam here, but I won't worry about it now. We'll pick it up with the paper strips at the very end. Still not totally dissolved, but it's getting there. I'll just touch it. It's not hot yet. It seems to be dissolved really well. Or well enough for me to start adding a glycerin. Okay, so I have one kilo of glycerin here. Let's see how many cups is that in case it's less than four cups. It's two cups for now. This serum is really kind of, it's not like water, it's a bit thicker. I'll just slowly mix this before I add more. Okay, let's add the rest and see if that makes two cups or a bit less yeah, it's a bit less as I suspected so um, this is one and a half cups okay so we need to change this to the recipe to three and a half cups So in this case, it's four cups of water and three and a half cups of glycerine. 
what I should have done is put all the gelatin in this so I can tell you how many cups of gelatin but you know you can always look at the packet that you're using and work out from there how much you need or how many packets you need to get 200 grams now this is hard to tell kind of when it's done but the way I work it out is that when I lift it up I see clear not uh, you see how it is kind of has like little dots it's not really clear and if I touch it it's just lukewarm and I need to mix it well so that uh, glycerin and gelatin are kind of one homogeneous mixture so I'm just doing it gently like this no whisking needed and this should never boil so you have to be careful to keep the temperature just before boiling you just want it to be hot enough to melt but without boiling and sometimes there are certain impurities like uh, dust particles or I don't know what in the gelatin itself so perhaps I can strain this uh, into the tray so I will turn the heat off like that and let that just be like that and I'll go and get the strainer okay I got a strainer like that and one of these because it might be a bit difficult for me to hold this is going to be heavy and I can't hold it with one hand and keep this with the other it's just I can't do that <laughs> all right okay I think that's it with the cooking so I have this here and I will I will just lift this up put it there and I'll put this away because we don't need it anymore just try and get this form of using my spatula I want to add this and does it say how it doesn't say when to add at the beginning or at the, the end but let me just see it's granules oh. actually I'm going to add some hot water into a container like this because it's granules I didn't realize this I'm going to add some hot water from that um, water that we used to cook this just to see if it's going to melt okay so I have some hot water just try to see if this is going to melt first doesn't seem to oh yeah it's dissolving yeah it definitely is dissolving want to 
make sure it's totally dissolved. So there's about one quarter of a cup of water that we now added to this and there seems to be some impurities there so I'm going to just do it like that. Adding this uh, little amount of water with that shouldn't make a big difference. Uh, you've seen how thick that gelatin was. Okay, I'm just going to do this gently. Make sure that preservative is well mixed into this. Now, Fun part. I want to pour a little bit in this one first. Okay. And I will pour really just this. I want to try this one. I don't think it will really matter uh, the fact that I took a little bit of the mixture for this because I did make a lot. It might make my final plate. Ooh, put too much in this one. Just a tiny bit. So I didn't realize there were holes here. Of course they would be cigarettes. Okay. I won't worry about skimming this one. Just leave it like that. Okay, a bit of a mess. Make sure it's dust free. going to put that one there and hopefully I can lift this now. Grab it like that and you just pour over the surface. Okay, get another piece of paper and just repeat until you see the clear.
and stick to the paper for some reason. So thinner paper or newspapers would work, I think, better than the copy paper. some uh, kitchen towel which is soft paper and I'm thinking if I fold it like this it might actually pick up this a little bit better yeah definitely but it's looking quite good I think A little bit there. Now I would leave this on a flat surface for 24 hours. Once it's set enough to be moved, I will take it to the fridge most likely because it's a very hot weather here and I feel like in hot weather it's going to take longer to set. But I'll wait till it's kind of not liquidy anymore and then I will take all of these uh, to the fridge. I'll continue recording tomorrow once they're all set and then we'll see how to take them out of this and we will try using them this is the following day it's been approximately 24 hours i took everything out of the fridge about two hours ago and i actually took these out of their molds just to see if the jelly set and it set perfectly so this one was in this and that one was in this ashtray and I only realized after I took it out that the ashtray had a little scratch there. I couldn't see it before, but it's kind of really obvious now that, I don't know if you can see, there is a scratch there. Anyway, this is just a test. I just want to see if it's going to work. And this one is also perfect. Look at that slab. I love it. It's quite thick good and I just have a piece of acetate here to put it because if you put this on the just on the paper it might actually stick to it okay so now I want to show you how to take it out of the tray you see it's kind of really set well I'm very happy with the thickness so what you do is you just gently pull on the corners I hope you can see this so you just keep pulling you press gently with your fingers and you just pull towards yourself and it kind of starts peeling off the tray if for whatever reason this doesn't want to happen you can always go around with a really thin knife but it usually works like this see how you can you just go around and peel those edges first yeah That's it. i 
make me feel good. So I found a can be an acetate, but I didn't have a big enough piece. So I just using I'm just using some vinyl that it's clean, and I want to take it out. So I'll just do this. Yeah. Look how gorgeous that is. this away and this slab is supposed to go like that I think I broke it here yeah I did maybe it's my ring or this too late now but because it's on the other side, it should be all right. I'm just trying to get it into the right shape. I'm very happy with it. That's the thickness. Nice and moist. It might be that it's a little bit soft because it's really hot here, but I want to test it now. I can't wait. Let me get some paper and some paint. Okay, I've got some paper here. Just ordinary copy paper. I've got a piece of acetate. I like to mix my colors here. And let's do some just background pages. Let's just see. It's actually bigger than my paper and it's perfect. So if I want to use a larger papers, it's going to work just fine. Really beautiful. Okay. really pretty I'm just you know doing the first print sometimes it just takes a while for it to kind of I don't know you just have to break it in <laughs> so to speak oh I love that color have some of that green I'm just doing some basic background and then we can do some with stencils I 
I usually have a larger sheet of just uh, this tissue paper to go over, but I sort of forgot to prepare some, so I'm just going to use this. Oh, I love it. It's a perfect print all the way to the edges. That's what I wanted. Let's try some of the, the small ones. I don't think this one will work as well because this ashtray has a chamfered edge around. So I might have to turn it the other way around. Even. I'll just wipe that off and I'll try turning it the other way around. To see if that helps. Okay, I'm gonna use it for my stuff. A little bit better than this isn't it I think the edges are a little bit more defined so I think it's it worked it's a success but I love this one it's kind of like really cool now I can just continue working on it more shapes and I want to try something to try and work it out. Yeah. You know how there are these frames so that you always put in the same position. Oh, I love it. I really love it. It moved a little bit more on this side. But that's all right. I can add maybe like some words here and that would be like a really, really cute page in a journal, wouldn't it? I love it. I just want to do something similar with this one. It's a nautical one. How about we try? This is going to be a bit more 
difficult. I just have to move this one for a second. I totally missed the spot. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Yeah, it's more fun. I like the idea. You just have to work out how to do it properly, you know, to have the little, like a frame or something so that when I put my page, it's always in the right spot. All right. <laughs> going to apply this this way and then I'll pick it up with this dry One way of doing it the jelly plate is a success even these ones kind of worked i love how this turned out and this one as well and the fact that i can color the full page all the way around i love it okay so now it's just about practicing and having fun i'm going to put my jelly plate the big slab into that tray same tray that i used to set it and I will be keeping it in the top shelf in the fridge until I'm ready to use it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found the information here useful. If you don't have a jelly plate, maybe you would like to make one for yourself. Let me just show you the final recipe. There it is. You can take a screen grab. Thank you so much for watching and for joining me today. I hope I see you again in my next video very soon. Bye for now.